I think we can get started. So, because it's March 14th. So, <laughs> okay. Hello, everybody. Uh, the next talk is by, is it Amin? I hope I'm pronouncing your name correct. Oh, I'm actually using the middle name, Ur, but oh, it's Ur. fine. Oh, Ur. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, we'll have Ur talk about um, hybrid cloud storage. Ur, okay. Go ahead. Thank you very much. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, my name is Ur. I am uh, a PhD student at Boston University and also doing an internship, internship with Red Hat um, SEF team at the CTO's office. So today I will um, talk about the hybrid cloud storage caching projects. Um, uh, so we design and implement a cache architecture to improve the performance of big data analytical um, workloads. So um, in our own data center, we didn't have a full bisection bandwidth, which is the case for many other data centers out there today. And we have a tremendous amount of data reuse. So we built a cache called D3N for a single data center. And the main idea behind um, the cache that we built is that it caches the data at the access side of network bottlenecks. It is a multi-layer cache, as you see in the fig uh, figure, where uh, we store the data on local racks and we forward to request to the upper layers using consistent hashing. So um, unlike other solutions out there today, like Alexio, our solution is not a single uh, cluster cache. It's actually as an extension to the existing data lake and it's designed in a way that it's shared among multiple clusters. So we put everything in the RGW code and the code is like upstream now by the Red Hat engineers. Um, so we run a bunch of experiments and we have a paper about this work. Um, but overall, um, the implementation imposes minimum overhead and it's significantly improved the performance of um, big data analytical workloads. We run experiments on one of the uh, Facebook's um, MapReduce cluster uh, traces and we see a, a reduction on the backend traffic and improvements on the um, performance. So um, everything so far, um, what we do done is for a single data center, but now we want to take this work uh, and extend it for a hybrid cloud use case. So the value offered by public cloud services are clear for many workloads. However, today many organizations want to keep their data sets in their private data center for different reasons, could be cost or security. For instance, um, Two Sigma, uh, head financial hedge fund, and one of our collaborators, they use spot instances to run their computation, and they create compute cluster in multiple regions. And however, due to the security issues, they want to keep their data sets in their private data center. And because of the current asymmetric network prices, companies like Two Sigma has a strong incentive for on-premise storage and cache data locally in um, different cloud regions. Um, so here is our new uh, proposed um, architecture for a uh, hybrid cloud scenario. And I'm going to go over all of the components. Um, so what we did is um, instead of like in, in our previous design, it was only for read-only and intermediate data sets. However, now if we want to cache the data on the other side of the wide area networks, write cache is important. So therefore, we also um, deploy a write cache. However, rather than implementing a replicated durable write cache, we use the existing Ceph code and stand up a local OSD cluster as a cache layer in each public cloud region. And also, as you see, we have read caches um, collocated with them. So read cache in this in our design stores data in like uh, block granularity. Um, however, in the write cache, we store data in object granularity. And any data coming from the client is first written into the write cache. And once the um, data is aged, um, after some time, um, Rados Gateway uh, flush the data to the backend. So we have also like inclusive cache model here where the same objects uh, can be present in both read and a write cache. And in the write cache, we also use um, erasure coding. Uh, we are still exploring its performance and um, the write uh, redundancy uh, in the write cache. 
The um, second thing we've done is um, in our previous design, we were using consistent hashing to locate the objects in the caches. Because it was simple, it doesn't require any protocol changes, and it was like easily upstream. However, now we have a right cache, we need a directory to do know where the data is stored. And to prevent any data loss, a uh, directory must be durable and reliable. So in the implementation, we are using Redis as a directory and a Redis gateways uh, contact, like talk to the Redis and get the location of each um, objects and forward their request to retrieve that objects. So the directory stores, um, information for each blocks, objects, um, and this is just an example. It acts as a database. Um, and also other um, information in the system, like cache service itself, what is their capacity, what is the hit rate, hit count, what is the bandwidth. Um, so, and the other thing is like, um, RGWs like, uh, doesn't aware of like how the data is indexed in directory. So directory really act like a database and it just serves the queries. And in the future, not just like our cache services, but we also want other components in like analytic clusters to talk to the directory. For example, cluster schedulers like Yarn or uh, to allocate the jobs based on where the data is like cached, right? Or your Kubernetes uh, or your like DNS server when they forward to the request um, based on, I don't know, like cache servers load, for example, or certain bandwidth information. So that directory, like really in the, in the future will provide us a lot of information, which not just the cache, but other components of this entire ecosystem can uh, benefit. And finally, when you're in a single data center, you usually have a fixed, not usually, but all the time you have a fixed network topology. And in our previous design, we were using any cache based lookup service to locate the cache services. However, when we are in a public cloud, you know, we cannot take advantage of the topology in the same way because there is no topology. So therefore, uh, we are, uh, we will use the Kubernetes DNS servers to forward the client's request to the nearest cache um, in, the, in the region. Um, and finally, um, most of the object stores today um, use S3 protocol. And we want to generalize our cache implementation. We just want to support uh, you know, multiple data lakes, not just Ceph. Um, therefore, um, we are using S3 for this purpose. And this way, you know, we can deploy these cache caches not only in front of the Ceph, but any other um, data lake like S3 or Minio or um, nothing comes to my mind right now, but it, whatever support S3. And um, so, what we have in here is um, there's like the there has been over like a, you know um, half a century of research into the caching techniques in multiprocessors, file system, web caches. Right now, however, we have this like huge opportunity with the global uh, or with the shared disk directory, right? And we want to look at we are right right now currently looking at how can we use this directory to do better cache management, right? Because as I mentioned in earlier slides, in the directory, you know, we store a huge amount of information about the data. We store who is accessing data, what, um, you know, what is the access size, how frequently they are accessing, what applications they are accessing. Like, and basically we have like the information about like the entire system, what's going on in our system. The second thing is when we are in the when we are dealing with object stores, it's different than, uh, for example, like C CPUs, right? Like in here, we are dealing with like large granularity object accesses. For instance, in Ceph, I can say it's like formic. Each object is formic. Every time you are reading or writing formic chunks, right? And these are also immutable. So these these uh, these unique. Uh, these unique uh, features um, provide us the opportunity to explore 
uh, different caching techniques, different than prior works like on CPUs or other web caches, right? So we can now run simple heuristic or even like uh, machine learning techniques to find common access patterns. For example, we know that like there are objects which are written many times, never read, or hot objects or cold objects. And can we detect these patterns? And so our key idea right now that we are working on this cache management scheme is that um, we want to make sure objects spend enough time in the cache and then we learn about uh, each object and each, each accesses and then we can find the right candidates for eviction. We also want to use this information story in directory and use this like historical based approach to predict future accesses. So um, where are we going now? Um, so this design and implementation allow us to do all interesting research. Um, as I mentioned, directory provide us now a global cash view, and we want to build a platform for other researchers to use the directory and explore different cash management algorithms, different policies. Um, we want to build a cache not for a single data lake, but for multiple data lakes, geo-distributed data lakes. For instance, the open storage network deploy one um, petabyte data lakes all around the country. And one of the problems they are facing today is their each user has to define which uh, where to store their data, which data lake they have to store data. So can we use the caching and do this more automatically? And can we place the data on behalf of the user without user telling us, like, can we place, I don't know, user A's data in data lake A, user B data in data lake N, for instance, right? Also, we want to exp explore, like, how erasure coding works in the cache layer, and this hasn't done much in, in the literature as well, and not redundantly store the data in cache. Um, we are also interested in uh, looking um, where do we run the computation of the data. For example, um, you know, one example is that if you have the data cache in region one, then can we spin up the cluster in region one or the other way around, right? You spin up your cluster sponsor instances in, let's say, region N, then can we prefetch the data before computation starts? Uh, so we are looking at these uh, these techniques as well, and um, to finally to realistically, you know, um, design all the things that we mentioned, uh, we need real system traces, right? And because of these traces, these uh, logs will help us understand better each application. Uh, each user, uh, each like jobs, and this way we can provide, uh, we, we can develop better algorithms and improve the cash management um, efficiency. So, you know, if anyone who is listening to this talk has such a traces or would like to talk about more about that, I will be happy to chat. Um, also, as I mentioned, um, um, we, the first version of the cache, D3N, is um, upstream, and you can find the details from our link. For the hybrid cloud cache implementation is also on GitHub. Uh, it's like um, you can download and um, play with it. We are still like updating the GitHub repo whenever like we have new functionalities. Um, and also, um, we are right now working on a simulation for this like cache management algorithm. Um, that code is not available right now, but hopefully it will be available soon on our GitHub repo as well. And if you want to learn more about uh, our projects, uh, please visit our, our web pages. Um, so I believe that's all. I'm happy to you know answer any questions um, you have. I am just going through the chats and I don't see any questions. Um, so maybe we can give folks a few minutes. Okay, sure. And see if any questions uh, sure. come through. Otherwise, mm -hmm. we'll just uh, we'll just move over to the break room, breakout. Sure. Break. Yeah. 
Oh, okay. Somebody shared the, yeah. Oh, so I have to verify. Oh. Should I stop sharing? Yeah, yeah, you can stop sharing now. Yeah. Okay. Great. <laughs> yes. Yeah. All right, people. Um, ooh, I guess we don't have questions. Okay, today. that's why we were very clear. Or right. <laughs> um, that's good. We appreciate your time so much. Thank you. No problem. So I have to move to the breakout room right now, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. All right. So you can Great. Thanks for listening. Well. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye.